Hey, how's it going? Parker Walbeck here with FullTimeFilmmaker.com, and today I'm joined by our newest team member, Nick Sales. Nick specializes in shooting music videos, and together we are going to be giving you our top 10 tips to shooting cinematic music videos. Now, quick background, about eight years ago, before I even got into video production, I originally wanted to get into music production, which naturally led me to make music videos for that music, which then led me to discover that I was actually better at shooting video than I was at making music. And even though I still have a great passion for music, I do recognize that I wasn't nearly as talented in music as I am in video, so I pivoted my passions and pursued video. But I do still love making music videos, and in fact, it's probably my favorite genre of video to shoot. However, I only shoot a few a year. As you guys know, I shoot a wide variety of video content, but Nick here shoots around 80 music videos a year and is one of the best music videographers that I personally know. For the past several years, he's been making over six figures a year shooting music videos around the world, and since he's been killing it in the music video industry today he's going to be helping me reveal our top 10 tips to shooting cinematic music videos also just fyi this video is one of 50 plus tutorials in a new mini course that we put together called music video pro that dives into everything you need to know to make a career out of music videos this new mini course is included in full-time filmmaker but we're also going to be selling it separately for those who want to focus just on music videos and we'll talk more about that at the end of this video but let's go ahead and dive into our top 10 tips Tip number one is buying the right gear and renting the better gear. Nick, what has been your experience with renting gear that you can't quite afford yet? Well, when I started my production company three years ago, I had just come from a company where we were shooting with high-end red cinema cameras. But as someone who just started his own business, I didn't have any of the right gear to make the type of music videos that I knew I could. And there's no way that I could afford a red camera right off the bat. However, I wanted to be known for someone who had the best production value possible, so I decided to rent red cameras for every music video that I shot for six months until I could afford one myself. I believe that you can make an awesome music video with any camera, and in the course Parker has a video showing you how he shot a cinematic looking music video using just his iPhone handheld in his living room. So by no means do you need expensive gear, but my clients knew the production value they were getting when I would rent a red, and it made me stand out from the other videographers in my area, which made it so that those clients chose me over others for future music videos. So my first tip would be to use whatever you can afford at first, but as you start landing paying jobs, to use part of your client's budget to rent some nicer gear to help separate your productions from others. I'll often spend part of my budget on hiring a lighting technician to bring in some nice lighting setups, which also helps take my videos to the next level. And though you can use a phone in your living room like Parker has proven, if you want to be taken seriously by clients and expect them to invest in you by paying you big budgets, you better be willing to invest in some nicer gear yourself. A RED camera is going to be a stretch for most, I understand that, but there's some great options out there for professional quality in cameras, like the Blackmagic 6K, the Canon 1DX Mark II, or a Canon EOS R. To go along with a solid camera body, a great all-purpose lens that we both often use is the Canon 24-70 f2.8 lens, allowing you to get both tight and wide shots at a shallow depth of field without having to switch out the lens. For drone shots, we use the Phantom 4 Pro and the Mavic 2 Pro, both great options. And of course, we'll always recommend getting a good stabilizer to go along with your camera, and the one that we recommend the most is the Glidecam HD Pro. Shooting with quality equipment is important to be looked at as a professional and being able to charge high prices but it won't make a difference if you haven't mastered how to use that equipment. We often run into filmmakers who want to become professionals but hardly ever go out and shoot anything. And I'm not talking about four or five videos, I'm talking about dozens of videos, hundreds of videos you have to put in repetition to improve as a filmmaker. The main reason why Nick has grown so much as a filmmaker is because he's shooting around 80 music videos a year. He's constantly learning from his mistakes and improving the quality of his videos. I'm constantly being hit up by students asking me why they aren't landing pay clients. They just can't seem to get hired or they're not able to charge as much as they want. And 90% of the time, the reason is because they haven't put in enough time to mastering their skills. They haven't shot enough. They haven't practiced enough. And when first starting out, I understand that it's intimidating to attempt shooting anything, but you have to get over your insecurities and realize that the first few videos that everyone shoots are always pretty terrible, but that's the only way to improve. I look back on my first few music videos I shot and I'm horrified, but with every music video I shot, I learned something new, got a little better, and through perseverance, I was able to go from shooting dumb music videos with my friends to getting hired by the piano guys. But the piano guys never would have found me had 
had I not shot hundreds of videos before that to get my video skill set to the point where it was worthy of their music. So get out there and shoot and start learning from your mistakes right now. And as a byproduct of putting in time and work, tip number three is to have a killer demo reel. This is the most common thing that I see lacking with people who want to get into this industry. Your future clients want to see what you're capable of and the quality of video that you can make for them. So do everything you can to build a portfolio that shows your best work. These are the shots with great movement, composition, lighting, and the shots that convey an emotion in the viewer. If you don't have these types of shots in your demo reel yet, go out and shoot music videos for free with the intent of adding those shots to your demo reel. Don't waste your time shooting anything mediocre. If you're shooting something for free, make sure that it's your absolute best work. Keep your demo reel short and keep it engaging. Anywhere from one to two minutes is ideal. As your skills improve and as you upgrade your gear, make changes to your demo reel to keep it current and to show your best work. For me, I release a new demo reel every year showcasing the best shots from that year, as well as a master demo reel that has a compilation of the best shots from the three years that I've had my production company. I owe so much of my success to my demo reel. Remember these tips, implement them into your reels, and I promise that they will help you to find clients. And we have a whole video inside of Music Video Pro that talks more in depth on how to create a killer demo reel. Moving on now to tip number four is networking. Get to know everyone in your local music industry. With music videos, as with most videos, who you know is just as important as what you know. Find the people in your area who are shooting music videos and offer to assist them on their shoots for free. Reach out to musicians in your area and get to know them. Reach out to recording studios and make sure they know who you are and that you shoot video because they have artists in their studios almost every day asking if they know anyone who shoots good music videos. So if you built a good relationship with them and they trust you as a professional videographer, they will likely recommend you to many of their artists. And make sure to have your demo reel done so that you can send that to all those people we just mentioned. This is probably the second most important element to landing paying clients after mastering your skills and having a portfolio is networking with people and building relationships. Most of our our business inquiries come from people either stumbling across our demo reels or they were recommended to us by someone who knew us and trusted us to shoot quality music videos. So don't underestimate the importance of building relationships. Once you've landed a client, tip number five is to pre-plan the shoot. We often get asked about our pre-production and storyboarding process for a music video. We both start by doing the same thing. Listen to the song about 20 times and just visualize what images could accompany that music to best bring out the emotion that the song is trying to convey. What location would match the music? What type of lighting? What type of camera movement? What lenses would you need to use for said locations and movements? What extra gear or people would you need to bring on to make your vision come together? What kind of story might you be able to include as B-roll to the artist's performance footage? This process takes time, several hours, sometimes even days to premeditate all the visuals in your head while you listen to the music and write down your thoughts until you have a solid idea of how you want to film the video. If the song is slow and beautiful, I usually visualize in my head lots of slow moving smooth glide cam shots. If the song is upbeat and poppy, then I usually visualize quicker moving shots that have more energy to them. Listening to the song dozens of times beforehand will also allow you to know it well enough to know what parts are coming up in the song as you're filming so you know how to best film those parts so you aren't wasting time on set learning the emotion of the song. If you're filming a choreographed dance, make sure you ask the dancers to send you a video of what the dance looks like so that you can watch that 20 times as well to know every movement the dancers make, to best know how to track them with your camera movements. If you're filming a B-roll story with actors, make sure you have the location scouted out, the costumes ready to go, and a shot list of what shots you plan on putting to which parts of the song. These few hours or days of preparation will make all the difference in how the final music video turns out. And we go more in depth about this in the course but hopefully this gives you some good ideas. Once you have your shoot pre-planned, now let's give you some tips for the actual shooting process. Tip number six is camera settings. Settings for music videos are pretty similar to other styles of video. We recommend shooting in 4K for best quality and the ability to digital zoom and post, but 1080p can work just fine too, if that's all you can afford. For frame rate, we usually shoot all the performance shots at 24 frames per second. Unless we want that dreamy look, then sometimes we'll speed up the music up to 250% and shoot everything at 60 frames per second and then slow that footage back down to 24 frames in post, which will match up with the normal song speed and make it look like they are singing in real time even though everything is slowed down. As for shutter speed, we recommend shooting at twice your frame rate, which for 24 frames per second would be 1 50th. For aperture, we like shooting at a low aperture like 1.4 or 2.8 to give us that shallow depth of field, but for wider shots where we're showing off more of a landscape or a group of people, 
will pump that aperture up to around an 8 or a 16 so that you can get more in focus. For ISO, you generally want to keep that as low as possible so you don't introduce too much noise into your image. And white balance is just going to depend on your lighting environment, but typically for outside daylight, you're going to be around 5600 Kelvin. Once you've got your settings dialed in, tip number seven is composition. This is a huge part to making your images look professional. Great composition starts with a great location. So like we mentioned, make sure to take some time before the shoot to find an aesthetic location that matches the emotion of your video. And then as you're shooting in that great location, make sure to remember the rule of thirds. This rule states that your subject should be in one of the thirds on the screen, depending on what direction they're facing. Make sure that their eyes are on the top third and remember to not give them too much headroom. This is the most common mistake that I see with new videographers is that they give their subject too much headroom and they forget to have their eyes on the top third. The second thing to know with the rule of thirds is to have your subject on the left or the right third depending on which way they're facing. If they're facing to the right, have them on the left third. And if they're facing to the left, have them on the right third. If they're looking straight into the camera and their bodies are squared up facing forward, then just frame them in the center of the frame. This takes practice keeping clean framing through entire takes, but it's crucial to making your images feel professionally shot and well composed. And as an important element of composition, tip number eight is lighting. Lighting can make or break a music video. You can follow all of the tips we've just given, but if your lighting sucks then your video is gonna look pretty amateur. So if you're outside, typically the best time to shoot is during gold an hour, which is the hour before sunset or the hour after sunrise. And when deciding which direction to shoot, you usually want to make sure the sun is behind your subject to keep an even soft light on your subject's face and to have a nice backlight to work with to introduce sun flares. And it can help to have an extra body and a reflector handy to help reflect some of that sunlight back onto your subject so that you don't have to blow out your background too much. But we both shot plenty of music videos without the luxury of reflector and you can still produce beautiful looking images without one. And if you're shooting indoors, we recommend that you turn off off all of the fluorescent lighting and then bring in your own lighting so that you can choose the amount of light and the direction of light to make it look more cinematic. Your backlight is probably your most important light for music videos and then once you set up your backlight you can set up a key light to put some fill light back on your subject. Soft light produced by soft boxes creates light that looks the most flattering for the human face and harsh light produced by spotlights creates lights that look a lot more dramatic as it creates more shadows. So depending on if you're going for more of a beauty shot or for more of a dramatic shot will depend depend on whether you choose soft or hard light for your key light. And again, we have full videos in the course talking about lighting more in depth, but point is don't skimp on lighting. It can make or break your video. Moving on now to tip number nine is to make camera movements that match the feeling of the music. If the song is a slow, beautiful love song, the camera movement should be slow and smooth on a glide cam or a motorized gimbal, or for even slower songs with super slower movements, sometimes sliders. For super slow songs, you can even just do a static shot without any movement, although Parker and I both feel that adding some kind of movement usually helps add to the emotion of the video. We both typically shoot the types of music videos that cater more towards the smooth glide cam type movements, and we'll usually put in a variety of push-ins, pull-outs, parallaxes, and so on. And as most songs have both faster and slower parts within the song, we usually try to match the speed of our movements to the tempo of the song. So for slower parts of the song, we'll slow down the movements. And for faster, more upbeat parts of the song, we'll make the movements faster to match the upbeat tempo. Doing this will better help the viewer feel the music and ultimately make the music convey more emotion. And speaking of emotion, tip number 10 is to find ways to tell a story with the video. The number one goal of storytelling is to evoke an emotional response from your viewer. So you can often gauge how well you told a story by whether or not the audience felt the emotion you were hoping they would feel. So as you're pre-planning each video, ask yourself, what do I want people to feel when they watch this video? Or what message does this song portray? This is the most important part in figuring out what story to tell. If the song is happy and carefree, you can create a story that goes along with that. Or if the song is a love song, then you can start thinking of ideas that would create feelings that would go hand in hand with a love song. Visualize in your head what the shots are going to be looking like before you film. It. This is important not only for the flow of the story, but also so you know how the edit will come together as well, which is kind of a bonus tip that goes along with storytelling, and that is to shoot to edit. Make sure you cover a variation of camera angles when shooting. I live by something that I call the five shot rule, which means where possible, I try and cover at least five different angles when filming an important piece of action. A wide shot to show the whole location, a long full body shot, a medium shot showing from the waist up, a close up shot which usually focuses just on the face or a specific detail 
detail, and then I always try and capture some cutaway shots or B-roll of a story to piece together with the performance shots. And to be even more exhaustive, we try and get at least two takes of each of those angles. So by giving ourselves a variety of different camera angles or options to choose from in the editing room, this allows us more freedom to tell the story the way we want to, to help bring out those emotions. With time crunches on some shoot schedules, you're not always going to have time to cover that many angles or to do that many takes. And so as a minimum, try and get at least two wide takes of the full song and at least two close-up takes of the full song. But there you have it, guys. That's a look at our top 10 tips to shooting cinematic music videos. Obviously, we're just skimming the surface here. We have full in-depth videos on each of these subjects inside Music Video Pro to help you shorten your learning curve and quickly start making money shooting music videos. So if you'd like to learn more, we have over 50 tutorials just like this in the Music Video Pro mini course. This course covers everything from knowing the best gear to buy, to in-depth camera settings, how to shoot different genres of music videos, our top five tips and tricks for shooting music videos, how to compose a shot, our top five favorite music video camera movements, how to tell stories in music videos, how to direct musicians and singers, how to edit and color grade music videos, editing tips and tricks, how to build a demo reel, how to land and keep clients, how to make a viral music video, figuring out what to charge for music videos, multiple job shadows where you can see a behind the scenes look on how we operate on different types of shoots, also editing job shadows to give you a raw look from beginning to end of how we edit music videos, and we'll also be providing raw footage and a Premiere Pro project file to one of our shoots so that you can practice editing and see inside the software all the decisions we've made. And with your purchase of Music Video Pro, you'll also get 50% off of Plural Eyes, which is a $300 software that helps you sync up all of your takes to the music, saving you hours of manually syncing up audio. And it's a software we highly recommend to anyone who plans on shooting a lot of music videos. Essentially, we teach you everything you need to know to get started on your own to eventually make six figures a year shooting music videos and and work with some of the top YouTubers and musicians in the world, just like we are currently. So if you wanna take your music videos to the next level, you can sign up for this course by clicking over here, or links are also in the description. We have a 30 day money back guarantee if you aren't fully satisfied. If you're not getting good value out of it, we don't want your money. And again, yes, this is included inside Full-Time Filmmaker as well. So if you're already a member, you have access to it, or if you plan on joining the full Ultimate Online Film School, you will have access to it in there. But that's it, folks. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe and and if you have any further questions, please let us know. But Nick here shoots about 80 wedding videos a year. Music videos. What'd I say? Wedding. Oh. <laughs>